Robin, would you like to update us on the church council meeting scheduled for this Wednesday? Yes, um, it's in a bulletin at 6 30, but we are going to change it to 6 o'clock uh, since we do have choir practice Wednesday night. So, Wednesday night, the 16th at 6 o'clock, the administrative council will meet. All right. And we have to be done by 7 for choir practice. So, it'll be a short meeting. Why not? <coughs> so, hopefully, that's not an inconvenience to those of you who are planning on coming in at 6 30, but I think it'll be good and we'll get some work done. and get out of here by 7 o'clock no later than. Doesn't it feel good to be coming back to church in a normal way, right? The men's breakfast was put off because of COVID numbers and all these meetings. Well, maybe not the meeting part, okay, but you know what I'm saying. We're back to some kind of normal. It feels so good to be uh, here in worship and and um, uh, I just pray that as, as we have come into this sanctuary this morning that whatever uh, struggles whatever anxieties concerns that you may have brought in with you uh, that you will just lay them at the feet of jesus this morning uh, for the next hour or so and just allow god to uh, meet you with god's grace in a very special and powerful way and so i invite you now to open your hearts to open your minds as we enter into this time of worship Good morning. Please join with me in the gathering prayer. Lord, we come to you this morning with so many concerns and issues that demand our attention. Our lives are burdened, our spirits are tired. Guide our lives and our steps as we walk this good journey, inward and outward. Help us to discern what you would have us to do. That others may be healed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand with me if you're able. And we'll do the call to worship. Wait for the Lord, be strong. The promise of God will never be broken. With God as our life, what is there to fear? The promise of God will never be broken. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The promise of God will never be broken. Now if you'll join with us to sing, God will take care of you, verses 1, 2, and 4, in your United Methodist hymnal on 130 or on the screen.
be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite the children to come forward for children's time. And we've got a couple of children. Do we have some children this morning? Just me? <laughs> I'll go down if I have to. <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, this will be good. There's Bo. This will be good. Bo. <laughs> no, no, come I'll on. I'll come down here too. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, come here, Bo. We're going to stand right here. All right, so this is audience participation today. Um, so, Bo, here's what we got to do. All right? Uh, can you do this? Okay. No, don't do it towards me, do it towards them. All right. All right, all right, all right stop. Okay, can you all do that? Okay, good. Good. We're going to talk a little bit about some scripture today from the book of Luke uh, a little bit later on, but first, a song. And they're going to want to participate in this because we're going to do something you may have not done in 40 years, some of you, or 50. <laughs> uh, this is Five Little Ducks. So do you, do you know Five Little Ducks? Okay. So here's what we got to do. Quack, quack, quack. Can you do that? <laughs> Will it make you feel better? Will it make you feel better if they do it with you? <laughs> yeah, turn All right. Everybody, hands up. Quack, quack, quack. All right, we're good. All right, so here goes. Uh, if you remember this from your childhood, uh, please sing along as it goes, and I'll try to keep my numbers straight. So, five little ducks, anybody know this? Five little ducks came out to play over the hill and far away. Mother little duck went quack, quack, quack. Get that hand up there one more time. <laughs> quack, quack, quack. And four little ducks came quacking back. Okay, you got the idea? All right. Four little ducks came out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, quack, quack. And three little ducks came quacking back. Three little ducks came out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, quack, quack. Two little ducks came quacking back. Two little ducks came out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, quack, quack. One little duck came quacking back. One little duck went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, quack, quack. No little ducks came quacking back. Mother duck went out to play over the hill and far away. Hmm. She said, quack, quack, quack. And all five ducks came quacking back. Did they do okay? All right. We're going to hear a scripture in a little bit about Jesus and Jerusalem. And it always, Jesus' relationship with Jerusalem was, was kind of rocky. Okay, and but he continued to speak the good news and to do miracles and to do healing and stuff like that. Kind of like, kind of like the mother duck in this little song that you helped lead this group in. Though so David said, you know, uh, it's really, really helpful. He went ahead and said that message, and he still says that to us today. That. We should come along and be his hands and feet. Can we pray this morning? Okay, he'll bow with me. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to, to reflect this morning on the message of Jesus and his, and, his, and his mission. Lord, we ask that you help us all to be better disciples and to reflect Jesus in everything we do. We ask these things this morning in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Jesus loves the little children, all the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in the sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And all of God. 
God's people said, Quiet. Oh, oh, those Methodists, I tell you what. Our scripture that reading this morning, our gospel lection is Luke chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. Luke 13, 31 through 35. I invite you to hear these words from the gospel writer. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of this portion of God's holy word. This is the good news for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the Gospel of Luke, we journey with Jesus to Jerusalem. And on this journey to Jerusalem, Jesus knows the destination. He knows that Jerusalem is where he must be. He knows that he will face serious opposition from religious leaders and eventually he will face death. Remember last week on the first Sunday in Lent, we talked about the mission of Jesus. Remember we talked about those words of Jesus that pretty much sum up his mission. Jesus coming out of the wilderness says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. And so as Jesus begins his journey to Jerusalem, in Luke chapter 9, we read the stories about Jesus healing the sick, lifting up the poor and the outcasts, Delivering those who were overcome by demons. And so Jesus is doing this work of bringing light wherever he goes and, and bringing the kingdom of God to people who need it the most. He is there proclaiming the good news. He is there proclaiming freedom. There's something fierce about the way Jesus presses on with his mission in spite of growing anger and outrage by religious leaders in particular. Jesus knows his mission and he knows that he will experience opposition and so he presses on with the why. Why he is there to set the captive free, to bring good news to the Poor. He's not too concerned about the growing anger and the growing opposition because he knows that what he is doing is what God has sent him to do. People begin following Jesus from town to town and these large crowds are gathering. Jesus doesn't let anyone or anything stand in the way of sharing the good news. We see the tenderness of Jesus as well. We see vulnerability in Jesus. And so Jesus is both fierce and vulnerable when he takes the time to 
get down on our level, right? When he reaches out to those who are oppressed, to the poor, we see a sense of vulnerability in Jesus. He's giving his life and his heart. We see the Jesus who is tender. We see a Jesus who is compassionate and loving as he reach out, reaches out to the least and the lost. He preaches in the fields. He preaches in the streets. He preaches in the synagogues. He cures wherever he goes. He touches someone who is broken and hurting. He performs miracles during the week and even on the Sabbath. Remember that got him in a little bit of trouble with the good religious folks. Because he wasn't following the rules. But Jesus has a mission. A mission that trumps the rules, right? Love and grace trump the rules. Even on the Sabbath, Jesus is bringing life and light to those whose lives are full of darkness, whose hearts are broken, who see no hope, Wherever Jesus goes, he brings signs of God's kingdom. And it's a kingdom where all are welcome at the table. I'm thankful for that this morning. In our divided world, in our divided communities, in our divided churches, where we exclude others because they don't look like us or think like us or vote like us, right? And Jesus offers this good news, this, this mission that he's on to, to bring good news to the poor and to proclaim freedom for all of us. It is a, a vision of the kingdom of God where all are welcome, where all are loved, where all are smothered in God's grace. In our text this morning, Jesus is warned by the Pharisees about Herod's plot to kill him. Did you kind of shake your head when you read that part of the scripture or when you heard it read? The Pharisees, aren't they the ones who hate Jesus? Aren't they the ones who are angry with Jesus, who are trying to have him killed? That's the same people. They're just people like us, right? I mean, sometimes we love and sometimes we hate. And in this moment, they warn Jesus. And I love the way Jesus stands up and shows how fierce he is and yet how vulnerable. He, he knows that the cross awaits him in Jerusalem. He knows that, that these people who are warning him, who seem to be his friends now, will be the same people who are calling for his crucifixion on down the road. And yet Jesus continues to do what Jesus does. That's to bring hope, to bring life, to bring deliverance. He sticks with the mission. He doesn't let those things distract him. And he knows, he knows that he will be rejected. He's not worried. He knows how fickle people can be. And he came to die for them as well. Even the fickle ones. The good news for us today is the good news that death on a cross was not the end for Jesus. It, we know how the story ends. We know about the resurrection. We know that Jesus overcame sin, darkness, death, and the grave. And yet in this season of Lent, it's a good time to remember that before the resurrection, we go through difficult times. This journey to the cross that we're on with Jesus is a difficult journey. As, as we take the time during this season of Lent to reflect upon our own lives and, and our own walks with Christ, there are things that we discover that make us feel uncomfortable about who we are and where
where we are. If we really pray that God will show us those areas in our lives where we need to surrender and repent and to return to God, it can be painful. When God really starts doing that work in our lives, when when we look at our own lives and we realize, I may have oppressed someone. I may have been the oppressor. I may have been the one who didn't treat that person fairly. I may have been the one who built that wall between myself and those I disagree with. And God is calling me to tear that wall down. God is calling me to go to that person I have harmed and to ask for their forgiveness. That's painful. That's tough work. At least it is for me, and I guess I'm the only one in here who struggles with that. But it is difficult work. And yet that is the mission that we're called to. To lift up others. To bring the light. And when we fall short of doing that, called to step back, to pause, and to re-examine our lives, and to allow Christ to examine us. And so that's the challenge for us in this season of Lent. Our focus is going to be on that mission for the next few weeks. Sharing the good news with others, and allowing God to use us to give the world light and hope. I don't know about you, but it's been a tough few weeks, hasn't it? With everything going on in the world, all the uncertainty. Really, if we're being honest, the last two or three years have been really difficult, right? Last couple of years. I mean, we make it through COVID and then the numbers start going up, there's a new strain and then, you know, and it's like this roller coaster ride we're on. And then finally, we get through where we're starting to see a little bit of relief from all of the stuff, all the junk that goes with COVID, right? And, and then we see what happens in the world, Russia invading Ukraine. And it's like, here we go again. Uncertainty, stress, anxiety. What's going on in our world? What is going to happen? And then many of you are not aware of this, but General Conference, which happens every four years, has been delayed again for another four years, or a couple years, 2024. And so we've got these big issues that need to be discussed in the United Methodist Church, and it's being delayed again, and a lot of folks are anxious about that, and a lot of folks tired of waiting, and there's this great division in our church right now, in the United Methodist Church, and no doubt some churches will go ahead and leave the denomination. We haven't talked about it much, but we will be, and our church leadership will be talking as well. And so it's a time of great anxiety and stress in so many ways. So many brothers and sisters in this community of faith are dealing with serious health issues. Hurting. Unsure about what the future holds. A lot of anxiety and fear about the future. So we look around and we see all the pain in our world. We see all the, the stress and tension see all the fear. So how are we to respond? Who are we to be in this time of great difficulty? I believe as followers of Jesus, as disciples of Jesus, those who desire to walk in the footsteps of our rabbi, Jesus, we are called to remain focused on our mission, right? To remember that no matter what, God is God. 
God is bigger than anything we could ever face in this life. And no matter what challenges we face, I believe God will give us the strength to face those challenges. Whether they're individual challenges, as a family, as a community, as a community of faith, whatever we are facing as a nation, God will give us the strength to face those challenges. And so if we can start there and put our faith and trust in God, that God is a faithful God who will never leave us, never forsake us, then we can focus on the mission. And what is the mission? Loving others, right? Serving others, doing what Jesus did, what we read about in our scripture today. Lifting others up. Providing hope and the good news to those who feel hopeless. Being that light, allowing the light of Christ to shine through us. The United Methodist Church has a presence in Ukraine right now. I've been so inspired by the stories of the Ukrainian people standing up, standing together, praying together, I saw a video the other day of a little Ukrainian girl in a bomb shelter singing her lungs out, singing her heart out, filled with joy. I believe that's a God moment where God is making very real a peace that passes all understanding, right? That's something we can experience in our daily lives as we journey to the cross with Jesus. And make no mistake about it, that is what Christ is calling us to share with others. Because that is the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand now as you are able and let us join together as we affirm our faith. The words of the Apostles' Creed are on the screen, also number 881 in your hymnals. Join with me now as we recite the words of this historic creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was a crucified dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father on high. From thence he has run to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
team lifting up Karen Ellis and uh, Debbie, you're in the choir. You're doing better. Did you want to share? sharing and member Catala in our prayers. I think I see Bob right there. And how's yeah, Catala doing, Bob? Uh, Y'all read his book, The Fabulous Dogecast page. That is a Catala sister of her. She died at the way of Other prayer concerns? There are many listed in your bulletin, and I encourage you to take your bulletin home this week and, and uh, throughout the week lift up these names. Just take five minutes or so and uh, pray for each of these and, and lift them up. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Holy and faithful God, we thank you for the opportunity we have to gather in your name as your people to worship and praise you, to fellowship with each other, and to be reminded of your amazing grace. As we have embarked on this journey of Lent, this journey towards the cross, we are reminded of how much we need you. God, we can't love the way you call us to love without you giving us that desire, giving us the heart to look beyond ourselves, to look at others, to their needs, to their hurts and pains and brokenness. And before we can do that, we have to look at ourselves and allow you to heal our brokenness. And so as we come to you this morning, we ask that you would do that, that you would examine each of us and, and that you would bring healing to those areas of our lives where we have experienced brokenness, heartache, and pain. There's times when we don't feel like we measure up Remind us, oh God, that through Jesus we can do everything you've called us to do. And, and that's what really matters. And so help us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Help us to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. Those we know who are hurting, help us to go to them and to, to provide <coughs> peace and, and hope and our presence and through our presence may they experience healing in body, mind, and spirit. God, we do lift up those who are facing serious illness and those who are struggling not knowing what the future holds with regard to their health and we pray God that you would comfort them that your spirit would Bring them strength and peace. We pray, God, for this community. Help us to have our eyes open and our hearts open as we go throughout our week and looking for opportunities to allow your light to shine even more in this community. Use us, O oh God. We pray for our national leaders. We pray for our men and women in uniform, that you would protect them, watch over them, for their willingness to sacrifice their lives, God. We give you thanks. We pray for peace in our world. We pray that hearts that have been hardened and the darkness that seems to consume would be lifted, would be softened, that, that hearts would be turned toward you. 
and that the leaders around this world who who are inflicting harm would experience your grace in a very real way. We know people around the world are praying for that right now. But God, no matter what happens in this world, no matter what we are facing, help us to have faith and confidence in you. Help us to know that you are bigger. And God, we pray that in our little corner of the world, that you would use us to make the world better. We often feel like we cannot make a tremendous impact in our world. That we don't have the power, we don't have the ability, but we do have the power within us to change and transform our little corner of the world. And so use us, work through us, starting at home in our own community. We thank you, God, for hearing the prayers of your people. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And we ask, God, that you would hear us now as we pray the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of forever. Amen. I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward this morning, at this time, for our tithes and offerings. Ushers from the Amen Pew back here, gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for all the many, many ways you have blessed us. You have blessed us in too many ways to count. And so we just want to say thank you. We ask God that as we bring these tithes and offerings to you, that you would bless and multiply them that you would consecrate them, and God, that you would bless each one here. We pray, God, that you would help us to be faithful stewards, and that you would continue to bless our community and beyond through the gifts that are given. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
the words will also be on the screen. And uh, I invite you to take this time, if you'd like, to come forward and pray at the prayer rail as we sing this closing hymn. Uh, if you're not a member of the church and would like to talk about joining the church, I'd be happy to talk about that. Uh, if you have something uh, in particular you want to pray about and you want me to pray with you, I'd be happy to do that as well. So as we, uh, as we prepare to do that, let us lift our voices as we sing this closing hymn. Eagle's wings. Yes. I'm going to mess this up a little bit. Well, that's fine. We're used to it. We'll sing this song twice. <laughs> okay. Twice. First time we sing it, we're going to say, and God will raise you up. The second time we sing it, it will say, and God will raise us up. You and us. So there's four yous in the first part, and there's four us in the second. Okay. So here we go. Clear as mud. <laughs> Amen. Yeah.